Hello everyone, it's Linda from Linda Z's, ready for your morning coffee. We are filming a little series, this uh, couple of next series of um, videos on hooping. We've had many customers ask us to repeat some of the things that we do when we do a project. I try to go in and maybe do a table runner or maybe I'm doing a quilt with a, a block of embroidery like what is behind me. And when I do something like that, I usually show you the, um, the actual embroidery design or whatever I'm doing for the quilt, if I'm doing actually what they call computerized quilting. So I have had many of you ask about how do we actually hoop these fabrics? So I've kind of broken them up into a series. This is going to be one of the first ones, which are pretty basic because usually we find when a new embroiderer buys an embroidery machine and maybe they're a quilter too and they want to do both embroidery for maybe home deck or maybe they want to do it also for their quilt blocks or their squares. They also, the very first thing I always see people do is go home and take one of their kitchen towels and try to embroider it and then they bring it back and it looks all kind of scrunchy and they wonder what they did wrong. I love when they do that because that tells me they're not afraid of their machine they're ready to start and explore what it can do. So I'm here today to give you the 101 basics of hooping. I think it would be a good review for some of you that are very, very uh, good at hooping. Maybe you can give us some techniques, some of you out there. And this will just kind of bring you back to where you started. So I have two types of things I'm gonna do today. We call this the hooping for towels. And the hooping for towels is a tea towel that I have in front of me. And then over here, I have a terry towel that's much thicker, much more, very thick actually, um, very plush. And I wanna show you a couple of techniques that will work on this too that I think you'll find very interesting. I do have um, stabilizer that of course that I'm gonna do. And that is one of the reasons why people get very frustrated when they're first starting to hoop fabrics because they think, oh, which stabilizer do you, I use and how do I do it? Don't worry about that right now. I'm, I'm actually just using the three that you're seeing over here. For the woven, the flat tea towel, I'm going to use a um, tearaway, just a medium tearaway in the hoop. And on top, I'm just gonna put the water soluble topper. On the, the um, very plush terry, I'm gonna do something a little different. So I want to show you how to do this hooping so that it really turns out right for you. Now there is an important aspect to hooping and that is where is your little turning um, tool to attach it to your machine. This happens to be a baby lock or brother hoop. Um, I've got some different ones here. This one on the side is a Bernina one and you can see that it's a, it's a little bit at the corner and this is the clamp that goes into the machine. So that means the top of the machine is here, the top of the design will be here and the bottom will be here. And that's important because if you're doing a design like this little, um, uh, I think it'd be cute, that little cardinal with a little bit of the you know, various colors in the greens, you certainly don't want, if you put your towel in like I'm doing this, say you use this Bernina towel and you put it in like this, with your clamp like this, and somehow your design was going this way. See how funny that would look on your towel when you finished it? It would be going to the side. You wanna make sure that that design is going to be placed exactly where you want it. And of course, that is a whole nother class on how to um, make sure you know where your design, you can rotate, you can, do pinpoint placement. If you have a projector on your machine or a camera, you can do all kinds of things with placing it. The most important thing once you figure out all that is to get your stabilizer and your towel into the hoop correctly. Now, there is a rule of thumb in stabilizing, of course, that you wanna fuse anything that you can, but you don't always have to do that. Um, I just have a plain old tearaway in my hand here for this hoop, and I'm going to put that, and I'm actually going to hoop the tearaway, which is the backing of the fabric. This is a woven fabric, and I'm actually going to then put the top of the hoop on top of the fabric. So underneath the hoop, 
if you can get this up real close, there's going to be stabilizer and a woven fabric that's on the back of the, the towel. And the top of the towel, there is going to be a uh, hoop that's going to go in and it's going to be nice and smooth. There's a couple of techniques before you do this. See how easy that went in? Now I have made a mark, or you could make a placement mark where you actually want that design to be, and then you could center your hoop in that. But I want to show you something that I just did there. Um, Nick, are they getting that up real close? Okay, so what I'm showing you here, let me take this out again. I know this sounds a little elementary for some of you, but it really isn't. It's really an important aspect. When you're cutting your stabilizer like this, you definitely want to make it much bigger than your hoop. Um, I even have a bigger piece, which I even like better. Don't scrimp on this part of it because it's much easier to get it into your hoop when you have at least a couple, two or three inches around the outside. If you only have this much and you're trying to get that into the hoop plus your fabric, you're going to have a little trouble with it um, sliding in. And it's so much easier when you have a bigger piece. So I'm putting, this is the bottom of the hoop. And you see that little um, nut that, it's a wing nut that is um, going to tighten up your hoop. This is the bottom of the hoop. It's going to go here. This is going to be the bottom of where the design is going to be. I'm going to put the stabilizer on top. Now this is a tougher one because if I had already fused this stabilizer on, it'd be much easier to put on. But I want to show you if you don't have a fusible stabilizer how to do this. So I'm putting it down here over the thing. I'm loosening up my hoop quite a bit. If I go here before I put the fabric in, you see how if I go to bring it out, it falls out? So it's important that there's a lot of room in here because remember, this extra room in here is, got, is going to be able to hold your towel and your stabilizer. So now I'm going to put this pretty much in the middle of where it's going to be. You can see there's an outline of all this around. Then I'm going to put my towel on top of it. And I have actually marked, like I said, the center. Don't get this hem of a towel or anything that's real heavy, pucker like a seam or whatever that you would be putting on a jacket or if you were doing that into this, the uh, hoop part. You want that on the outside. So now I'm going to push this down with all my fingers. Now, do you see how it's a little puckery on the outside here? It's still okay. It's not gonna be a problem yet, but it is definitely not tight enough because what's happening if I go to bring this over to my uh, machine, see what's gonna happen? It falls out. So I know that this is not, I have not tightened up the nut on the bottom. And it's really important that I do that before I take it to the machine because you do want this hoop to stay in while you are doing your embroidery. You don't want that to pop out as the embroidery is starting. So in order to do that, there is this wonderful little screwdriver and most of you have something like this that came with your machines. Now you see, I have it so loose so that tells me I can tighten it up a little bit already before I put it in the hoop because it's starting to come out even as I am putting the, um, even as I'm tightening it with the screwdriver. So do you see how I take my hands and I really push it down? There's still some puckering on the outside, which I don't want too much puckering. And I, the way I have put this, I, my mark is not in the center. See this part of the Hoop, that's the center of the hoop. I'm going to get that. I have to move the bottom one over a little bit to get it exact. And you can see now it's really going to be exact. It's in the exact place that I want it. The, if I were doing this little, um, well, this is too big. Let's say I were doing a small initial or just a small flower and the bottom in this hoop, this is a perfect place for it to be because the, um, what's happening here when I'm doing this, um, I'm gonna test it and I'm gonna turn, but I see this puckering that's happening on the outside and I don't like that, but I still have to tighten it up because it is not going to stay in the hoop if I don't tighten it up. And this kind of a screwdriver, and it doesn't really matter which one you use, it's just an easier one, um, has a little um, screwdriver piece that comes out 
that you can use to take the needle of the machine in and out. Now I'm going to push it back in here and I'm going to go down to this. It's got a little opening of T on the um, inside of the screw and I'm going to tighten it up. But you've got to be careful you don't tighten it too tight because what would happen if I tighten it too tight? I can hear the answers out there, those of you that know what I'm talking about. It will pucker and it will really, really, once it releases, the, the fabric will pucker into the design. So this is something that's really important and you'll get it as you start to sew. Now I want you to look at this. I don't know if you can see this. It's still pretty tight, but I don't like the, the looseness of this. You see how that's a little bit loose in here? Now, myself, when I am doing something like this, I put a fusible on it. But many, many times you don't have a fusible at home. I know many of you get started with embroidery and you only have tear away. And tear away will work just fine as long as it is nice and tight inside the hoop and tight to the fabric. So that means, because that's loose in there, I am going to have to take this out again. It's real simple to do. And it's something you need to do. I know you might have a tendency to say, oh, gee, I'm not going to take that out. Looks just fine to me. Well, it may look fine to you right now, but after you do that design and it's loose in there, it's going to shift the fabric around. And that, again, is going to cause what? Right. It's going to cause puckering. And puckering will happen if your, your fabric and your stabilizer are too tight or if it's too loose. It happens with both methods. So it's really important that you get to know exactly what the right method is for pulling this. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of a tug to make sure that this fabric and this stabilizer are totally in sync with each other. By pulling this just a little bit, and I, if you can kind of, um, feel what I'm doing here. I am literally holding both the underlay sta stabilizer and the upper top of the fabric. So they really are pulling together. And I'm going to do it on the side too because I really want to get that nice and smooth. I don't want any puckers on the inside. Now remember, I still have to tighten this a little bit more. I can see it and I can feel it when I go like this. There's a little slub. This is a linen tablecloth and there's a little slub in it, so it's, uh, it's fine. Now I'm moving this hoop over to the back of the um, table so I can get in here. And you could do it with your hands, but what happens, what's a really good um, indicator for how tight you should hope your um, fabric when you're doing this, get to about as tight as you can go with your hoop. And then you want to put this in and get that little um, screwdriver real tight into the uh, notch that's in the um, in the end of the screw and I'm going to just tighten it oh, a couple more times. You don't have to do it too much. And now I can see I still have a few puckers on the outside around here. This is what I'm talking about. And a little a few puckers here. But I can see the inside. Actually I don't like it. I'm going to pull it again a little bit. And I'm going to pull it a little bit more here too, because I don't want it to be too loose on the inside. And now here's another thing. It's nice and tight here, but I hope they can get the light here. Do you see this little puckering right here? And this is why I wanted to do this on tearaway so you could see what I'm talking about. That's going to give you a pucker if you would do your design all the way down to the bottom. That's a little too, and I'm getting very picky here because I really want you to see it the right way. But you can see that's a little bit too tight. So I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to loosen my lug nut a little bit. And then I'm going to pull this out to see if it can come out real nice and smooth. Turn it back over here. Oh, I can see it's, it's looking really nice now. And I know everybody has thought about this um, you know, why am I getting puckering? They ask questions on that. And this is one of the reasons if you don't have it in there exactly right. So now I'm turning to the back. Now look at the difference. It's still nice and tight. There's no puckers up here. And it's just really, really nice and smooth in the back. So I know that this towel and this embroidery project now 
is really ready to go into the hoop. However, there's one last thing, <laughs> and what is that? You know I always put a topper, if I can, on my hoop, and I've already cut the little tape. This uh, magic tape is just wonderful for that. And again, I, I tape it right down in the corners so it's not gonna go anywhere. And I do a couple of these. I, this is a little bit longer or a little bit um, wider than I would like when I'm doing this. <clears throat> but don't worry if this one isn't quite as smooth. I, one of the things, and I, I will show you this because I think it's really another important thing. <clears throat> I would take this and cut off about another inch because I find myself that when I'm doing any kind of embroidery, whether it's on a quilt or a quilt label, whether it is in a table runner, whatever it is, if I have the um, inside of the hoop filled just perfectly with the um, water soluble topper, then I know that I'm gonna sew it right. And I'm actually going to take those little, and these are reusable so you don't have to worry about them. I'm gonna just stick it on. The design that I'm gonna do on here is just right in the middle. It's a small design, so I probably don't need all four corners, but you could do the four corners if you want. And now I know that's gonna hold it very, very nice and smooth. Okay, and voila, we're ready to go. And you can see this has got a little bit of a pucker on it. I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to get it at the side a little bit for you to see. But that's okay. Once this starts sewing, this will hold the, the stitches down very nicely. And this is not too tight. You know, sometimes people say it should be tight like a drum. And yeah, somewhat, you can hear it a little bit, but not so tight that it's gonna pucker everything on the bottom. So now I'm gonna move over to the uh, terry towel because it's really the same thing, same identical idea, but there are a couple of different techniques when you get into a thicker towel. So now this is the terry towel that is, um, everybody seems to want to do right away. I would not recommend that. They are harder to hoop. Um, sometimes you do have to have a second set of hands when you're putting them in there if you're actually hooping the towel. I have had other people that have gone and taken a stabilizer that's sticky, you know, like a um, perfect stick. There's some other types of stabilizers you can use. However, if it's a perfect stick and you pull it off, what's gonna happen? If the, if the loops on the towel aren't real well done and they might come and pull off with you, and if you're handling that to a guest or somebody, you don't want that look. So this is why I'm trying to show you something that we really can hoop it. You can see that I have it um, on the back. I've hooped this. And I, if this were a gift that I was gonna give to someone, I would take something called a heat and stay uh, or heat and gone and I would take it and it's and I take my little um, magic tape which put it on here and I just put it on the corners and this one too. The one thing you've got to be careful when you're using this tape when you put it down is you want to make sure it's really down even that's not sticking up like this because otherwise it might hit the side of the um, embroidery as you're doing it and you don't want that to happen to cause any kind of little bumps or glitches in your machine. So you want to have it down real good. Now this is this heat and gone. It's right here. You can see it. The way that you can tell it's different from your water soluble topper. If you feel the front and the back, the, the back is very rough. It's got little bumps on it and those bumps go down onto the terry. And do you know why they would go onto the terry? Not up, but they're gonna face down because then the design won't sink into the terry. It will keep the design raised up a little bit. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and I'm gonna put this, um, these little, um, this heat and gone with the little bumps on it or the rough side and that's what's going to go down right onto the top of the terry also. And again, I'll take some of the magic tape and just put a little bit of it down. So this isn't as crucial for, um, it's not going to be moving around much, so you don't have to have it quite as, as bad. I, I stuck this down and it stuck down real, real well. All right, so now I'm going to put this in this. Now, 
The little bumps are down. This is the top side. This is an old towel, so I just wanted to show you this was already done like that. Um, when I did the design here, I didn't put this on until afterwards. So I did the design and then I put the um, extra heavy fabric. Otherwise you'd have to hoop over the, the uh, two layers and that would be too hard to do. So you can see now I have the heat and gone with the bumps down on top on the top layer and then on the bottom, and see this is why it's important that you get that tape really, really stuck down so it doesn't come off like that. And then the bumps are down on the back too. And this is actually hooped. Now I'll do my design and when I'm through, I pull most of the stabilizer off and then I take just a quick little iron and I always use a Teflon iron, you, or if you have a Teflon plate on the Laura Star like this one does, you always want to use that plate because it will keep the, um, the and it'll just kind of bubble up a little bit and then you just brush it off and the, the uh, stabilizer is gone and your towel looks perfect. It'll, the same thing on the back, you're going to pull it off, you're going to touch it real quickly with a towel, with the um, stabilizer or the uh, Teflon part of the iron and it will bubble up and the stabilizer will go away and it's a perfect, perfect towel to give as a gift. Now there are other methods and I'm going to cover some of those. We have a new, I love it, five by seven and it is a um, magnetic frame. Uh, Brother and Baby Lock have just come out with it. It is just stunning and it's just wonderful. Bernina has that wonderful Mega and Maxi hoop with the round turn. It just is so easy. They've got the rubber around the outside. So when you put your design in, it goes, or your fabric in, it goes in real easy. So I hope this gives you some ideas on towels. I think it's really important to get those basics. I know I'm spending lots of time and little detail on this, but I think it's important because you'll, the more you can feel this, this is something that is very difficult to demonstrate because this is a feeling process. And I know when you start getting in and trying some of this, it will, it'll start to feel very comfortable for you. You'll know what stabilizer to use and when to do it. I wanna give a gift away. I think it would be really key. So I have some really wonderful things that were, I have from Holiday. Um, they are just, they're from OESD and I just love them. They're $75 each and they um, make little cards. There's cute little, I wish I'd had this the other day when I was drinking my tea. Somebody gave me a wonderful tea holder and I just loved the tea, but it was a little warm and I couldn't find my cozy. So this would be a wonderful thing for that. And these are just cute little designs you could put on a jacket, on an apron, on all kinds of things. So I wanna give these away. It's, um, should I give three different ones or should one person get all three? <laughs> make one person very lucky. Oh, one person, very lucky. You better thank Nikki for this. Nicola, thank you. <laughs> so uh, how do they get the, um, how do they win this? You have to sign up the form on the website. All you have to do is sign up the form on our website. Go on to our website, the bottom, very bottom. Free giveaway. Free giveaway. Click on it. Yeah. You get a very, very good chance. It's free, so why not try it, <laughs> okay? Thanks, everyone. Uh, our next hooping is going to be on um, woven fabric. We're gonna do one on just strictly knits. We're going to try and do one on hat hooping because I know many of you are really talking about that too. There's, there's some really fun things out there with hooping techniques. We have um, beautiful um, new um, big hoop for multi-needle machines for people that are doing big quilts and want to do quilting in the hoop. Like behind me, if you can see this quilt, you could do just a block and then you could do the stippling around it. And this doesn't take any stabilizer at all. You will put the hoop in. I mean, that's almost unheard of not to put stabilizer in, but look at it. There's absolutely no puckering on it at all. I think it's, um, it's one of the quilts that we have a little hard time finding. Um, I've got the name, I think it's Meow and something. And there's one on dogs too that's really cute. And you could call the store and they could give you the title and uh, get you one of the patterns if you need it. Thanks again, everyone. We hope to see you in the next um, video and another one on hooping. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.